Hey, good morning. Pete, North Las Vegas. Hey, I thought I'd do a video this morning. I'm trying to come up with a do-it-yourself uh, method of using the uh, standard A2 buttstock sling and turn it into a QD. And I looked online for off and on for a couple hours, and I just couldn't find anything that was specifically designed for an inch and a quarter sling to adapt or convert this to QD. So I decided to um, try to come up with something myself. And I did manage to come up with something, but I'm still not quite sure if I'm gonna use it. And um, this is what I ended up with. That's a female QD socket. And this will be going here. And then uh, just be running your standard uh, push button off the back of the sling. And I just I just wanted some way to quickly get the, the strap off if I needed to get it off. And so anyway, now we'll talk about what I used to accomplish this monstrosity. Okay, so about as close as I could get to finding something that might work was uh, this this here at Grove Tech. And um, they give you some pictures here of how it kind of fits. And in Grove Tech's defense, this adapter was designed for the, uh, the M4 style buttstocks. And then uh, I'll take this out of the package and show you how this is supposed to work. And then I'll show you how I ended up modifying it into this. Okay, so like I was saying in the uh, previous clip, this is what it was actually designed for. And this is how you're supposed to use it. Now, the O-ring is supposed to be on the other side, according to their instructions. But I just slapped it in here real quick so you could see how it goes. And... Uh, so anyway, that's supposed to give you a, a QD for the uh, M M4 style buttstock. Okay, so when I bought this from uh, Grove Tech, I didn't realize that they were using a uh, one inch um, buckle and sling size. Um, and the reason they had to go one inch is because if they used a larger size uh, buckle, it wasn't gonna fit in here. So if they would have went with the standard one and a quarter inch size, I don't think you're going to get this in there. So they, they went with one inch, and I think that's why they used one inch. But um, they didn't mention that on their site, and I didn't realize that, you know, you'd have to use one inch. So that was the first discovery is after I bought these, um, these were not one and a quarter inch, that they were just uh, one inch. Okay, so after I look at it a little bit closer, even though the, the internal uh, dimensions of the, the buckle were right at one inch, the uh, QD portion was a little bit bigger. Now, this is not one and a quarter inch. It comes in at about one and a sixteenth, a little over sixteenth, maybe somewhere around one and an eighth inch. So I thought, well, maybe my uh, one and a quarter inch uh, webbing will will still fit in there, not get all bunched up, um, which it did. So it's it's kind of a tight fit, but it's not all wadded up in there and it doesn't look too bad. Okay, so the adapter they give you, it's all sewn together. And uh, so I had to cut, I had to cut the QD part out and then, uh, I just cut this out because I thought maybe I could still use it, but I couldn't. So anyway, I ended up destroying what I purchased just to get this part here, like I said, into a one and a quarter inch. So um, that's how I ended up with this. Now, this part here um, it was sacrificed from a, a regular sling. And... This sling here, in its original form, 
uh, went around the center part of the turnbuckle, the one and a quarter inch, not this one, and was sewn together. So this was sitting on on the plastic turnbuckle like this, but but sewn together. So that's, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up. I may take this apart just to show you, but kind of a pain in the butt getting it put together. But you can see where this turnbuckle here is sewn together in, in the center. Okay, so from the original Grove Tech, you can see that I used the O-ring just to capture the, the tail here that's sticking out. Kind of keep that tucked away. But I'm gonna try to show how I I put put this together. And then I'll take some of it apart. I'm not gonna take the whole thing apart, but because it was a pain in the butt to get everything orientated correctly. But we'll put it on the rifle real quick. Just so you can see what, what I did here. Okay, so I got my QD mounted to the main part of the strap. Um, I took this part of the loop out of this turnbuckle here, and we'll put this uh, through the A2 buttstock, and I'm gonna loop it back through here, and then uh, take the O-ring and, and capture that again, and then we'll show you it all put together. Okay, so it, I mean, it looks a little bit clunky, and I don't know if I'm actually gonna run this or not. This is kind of a proof of concept, just trial and error to see what I can come up with for a QD and not have to actually modify this, this part of the buttstock. So we'll plug this in and uh, see what the whole thing looks like snapped together. Okay, like I said, it, it works. And um, my only other concern is this is not steel and their website doesn't say what it is. Uh, I don't know if it's 7075 or if it's uh, 6000 series aluminum. I'm sure it's strong enough and it'll last long enough. Um, but they, they don't give you a whole lot of information on their website. Like I said, they didn't even mention that the original was uh, one inch instead of an uh, inch and a quarter. Okay, so that takes care of your, your standard way to mount and having a QD. Okay, so the other reason I wanted to go to some type of QD arrangement off the bottom sling here is if I want to carry the rifle across my chest or with the muzzle pointed down in front of me, I'm trying to carry an AR with this configuration with the, the bottom uh, sling swivel is kind of problematic. The rifle has a tendency to roll off of you and get wadded up, uh, especially if you're not holding on to it. So I wanted the option of moving the sling to a location to where it minimizes that from happening. So that's what this QD up here is going to be about. And this is also Grove Tech. And what they want you to do is uh, drill a hole in your buttstock, a half inch, tap it with a 9 16 by 18 threads per inch tap. Then you screw this in to the hole in the threads that you just made. Now, this um, QD also has a hex key inside it. So once you've threaded that hole, that's this is how you spin this into the threads. Okay, so I did see some videos where people have used this without the backing nut. And if you're going to use it with the backing nut on an A2 buttstock, you get about uh, a quarter inch of spacing. So that's the thickness of your stock with the uh, the locking nut. Now, if you want to try to spin this into like a, a synthetic stock that you've tapped, um, you'll get a little bit more thread engagement. Um, Grove Tech also suggests that even with the backing nut, that that you use a little bit of uh, either epoxy or a thread locker uh, into the hole before you screw it in. And uh, anyway, that's kind of what it ends up looking like when you're done. And like I say, that backing nut will be on the inside. 
So anyway, uh, I don't know if I'm actually going to run all this stuff. I will install this QD. Uh, just not sure about all this. This is turned out kind of clunky, but like I was saying, I, I looked online for a long time and I could not find anything specifically designed to adapt this uh, bottom sling to a female QD. And uh, so anyway, if nothing else, this is a, a not how to do it video. All right, well, Pete in North Las Vegas, over and out.